Matt Jesus on a pilgrimage, still walking. I'm Andy Doyle, the Bishop of Texas, and that's my six-word autobiography. My hope for this podcast is to walk with you and talk with you about God, the church, and where we're headed next. I want uh, to begin uh, by talking to you about the bowerbird, or maybe I should talk about the black kite or the American crow. Some of these you probably know, some of them you don't, but I bet you know the magpie. The magpie is one of just a few birds that is interested in shiny objects. You've probably heard this, right? That they collect shiny objects and they put them in their nest. The magpie, uh, uh, we don't really know why the magpie does this. There's a lot of different ideas, but most of them seem to be an application of the human nature to be distracted by shiny objects, and maybe less by what actually motivates the bird. New studies are even challenging this. But this really stuck with me this week. This idea of distraction, this idea of uh, wandering off to the new and shiny thing. Perhaps it is because this week we hold in tension the peace of our Christian year where we cross over from the celebration of Jesus and then somehow within a matter of hours become distracted and turn on Jesus and decide that we actually want something different. It is the inconsistent nature of human interest. It is what I might call the magpie faith, that we're always interested in finding something that we think will solve all of our problems. (laughs) Sometimes it's people. Sometimes it's politics. Sometimes it's economics. Um, We get confused. Uh, And this is echoed uh, with the disciples, right? It's echoed in their own kind of following uh, Jesus through these hours, this great shift. They have Uh, entered the holy city, and then whether it's as the cock crows or at the fire or while others are searching and investigating what just has happened, they all seem to deny the person they've been traveling with for the last couple of years. Indeed, I would suggest that our church even looks for this in its ministry, There's kind of this ever-present desire to try something new rather than something old. And that's saying something for me because I always like something new. (laughs) I mean, I I recognize this in myself. Uh, And uh, on uh, the eve of Jesus' crucifixion this week, I think we should pay attention to this, this kind of inconsistent faith. Part of it is because I think all of us really want to move in our life with God to a more mature faith, right? Like that's part of what brings us back here, not just for the comfort of being with our church family week to week, right? But we actually want and desire a greater relationship with God. That's at the core of it. And in fact, today, as we get ready to confirm Uh, all of uh, these folks, they're saying we're going to keep looking (laughs) to go deeper. That's going to be our life's journey, and you all are going to say we will support you in that. But what Holy Week does is remind us there's really only one truth to this search, a reminder that God loves us that God in Jesus Christ takes on our limbs, our very bodies, was born like one of us with all of the same human attributes. 
this Christ, while on the one hand, Lord of all, becomes embodied with our bodies, <laughs> with our flesh, and takes upon himself our burdens even. And in doing this, he suffers for all people and is buried, taking on not just our being, but even being laid in a tomb for us, which defeats eternally the lasting effects of death for our souls. The Lord of all bearing the form of our flesh restores us to freedom that our heavenly form might return to me, wrote St. Paulinus. Jesus is not, you see, just our guiding spirit. Jesus was a living human who modeled for us a way of life, a way through, a way of navigating all of the shiny objects to realize that the only thing that we are really looking for is God. St. Augustine said we are actually made with this kind of hole inside of ourselves that God only fits. But it is natural for us to want all the other stuff because we're looking, we're looking, we're looking. And so I bring that to you to first to say there's no shame in being a magpie, right? There's no shame in it at all. It's like our human nature to understand. And I will tell you, I've got like a thousand different things I'm interested in. I just like one week it's this, next week it's that. Joanne just puts up with it. It's like, okay, we'll get rid of that in six months, right? You know, so it, it's just to say that we, but what that is, right? Like when we recognize that we should realize, ah, that's us seeking this deeper relationship of God. Paul wrote, if then there is any encouragement in this, right? It's the consolation of God's love. Any sharing in the spirit, any compassion and sympathy. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but humility, remembering Jesus. Regard others, right? And better yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests and shiny objects, he's saying, but to the interest of others, right? Just as Jesus took all of that and focused it on us. We are invited to take all of that searching and desire for the shiny objects and focus it on one another, to desire to be in relationship with each other. Paul is making a connection between the Christian life lived after the resurrection with Jesus' own final last gift of his life. And so the intention of the Christian life is one that says, yes, we all suffer from magpie faith and magpie desires. It is our nature as human beings. And though we are distracted, we know there is only one thing we're looking for. And in this church, I love this church for this. We actually don't find shame in that search. What we say is, when that happens, return to God. Get right with God. Remind yourself God's who you're looking for. We'll say it in just a few minutes, in fact. We're all going to fail. <laughs> There's no perfection today. I know your parents and everybody else is hoping that when I lay hands on you, you will be the perfected human being. <laughs> It's, I, just from my own experience, I can tell you that's not going to happen. Bishop Saucedo wished it had, but it didn't when he laid hands on my head. But this is the holiest of weeks. This is the holiest of weeks. This is the week to begin a new journey together. This is the week to get right with God, to remind ourselves that God is the one ultimately we seek that Jesus is an ultimate vision of who God is by the living of his life. And to say to ourselves in the days that come that we wish to follow this Jesus and in so doing, we will get right with God in this holiest of holy seasons. And just be honest about both 
our magpie faith, but also the one we seek. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for listening. Join me in conversation on Twitter, at Texas Bishop, and spread the word about this podcast by leaving a review on iTunes. Thank you.